So, the Engagement Excellence Summit. Keynote speaker kicking the whole thing off. We start with Kylie Green from Reward Gateway. Now, really interesting start because she lays the foundation for the whole session. And what was interesting here is she makes the statement, research has shown that actually what people want from coming to work, from an organization, has not really changed that um, over the last 80 years. So studies that dig down into, yeah, what are people looking for? You know, what do they value? What do they really want out of it? It keeps bringing up the same few things and they encapsulated as respect, purpose, relationship. So respect for each other and for the value of the work you do for the, uh, for what you bring to your organization purpose that your organization is doing something worthwhile and that therefore you are your work has meaning you're contributing to something and then relationship kind of that interconnectedness in the workplace the fact that you're not just all cogs in machine working together but you are partners you are working together equally and that you feel connected to the people around you and so think about that that's back to the 40s 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, noughties, 10s, and now into the 20s, the new roaring 20s. And we get hung up on the generational aspect. And indeed, there was some interesting stuff about sort of generational attitudes. But whilst we may think that people want different things, no, not really. How people express what they want or kind of what their expectations are may be different. But actually, what people value in a workplace, what they are keen to receive, is actually the same. And it has been the same consistently through these studies. So there is that thread there. So people are after respect, purpose and relationship. Kylie uh, brought to my attention the engagement bridge uh, that Rod Gateway uh, produce. Really loved it. Uh, if you want to, you can check it out really easy. Uh, rg.co backslash bridge. Fantastic. rg.co slash bridge. Um, and it's kind of showing how do you nurture and feed true engagement in your organization? And one of those lovely things that kind of crystallizes a bit like Maslow's hierarchy of needs in that, you know, you've got different bricks, you know, here is pay and sort of, you know, working hours and uh, things at the bottom. But then here you have these other elements that all stack up and yeah, you need all of them and you can't skip any. So all of these are different things that come together. Um, and yeah, she brought it to life with real life examples from her work. Uh, from Reward Gateway clients of how they had uh, different organisations have managed to deliver significant turnaround in engagement in their organisation and how each of those campaigns kind of focused or delivered on different parts of the engagement bridge. Really interesting example with Holden, uh, Vauxhall, as we know them in the UK, um, who had a car factory in Australia. It was their last remaining car factory. The town it was based in, uh, essentially it's you know, the majority of the workforce or work in this factory. And a decision had been made that the factory was gonna be closed down in four years time. And this posed an interesting question for the management of that um, factory, because the thing is they now know that factory is closing. That's something that they can sit on for four years or they can share that information. They can tell their workforce. Now, a lot of places I've worked, uh, they would keep it a secret. It's too early to tell people, oh, how will they react? Or oh, demotivate them or everyone might leave and it'll be leave us in the lurch. But a really key part of this whole thing is open and honest communication. And this is a personal thing for me where I have been frustrated over the years about um, long story short, I mean, one place, you know, we knew something was going to happen. It's just like, look, can we not just tell people now? And the answer I got is just like, no, because we're never normally this open. And if we're this open now, people won't trust us. They won't believe us because we've never done this before. And it's just, ah, oh, what a vicious circle to be caught in where it's just, oh, we can't be open and honest 
because we've never been open on us before and how will people trust us until we do it anyway so this factory in australia uh they made the right decision the courageous decision and they told their workforce they engaged with them they said look this is the situation the factory is going to close and it was beautiful because they came together with that they set themselves the challenge that the last car they build would be the very best car that they'd ever built and in fact by finding this collective purpose by being open and honest and working together as a team they did they significantly raised their standards they raised their standards and they were a world class standard facility at the point they closed and it goes to show just how it rewards if you engage with people if you're open and honest with them if you respect them you give them a purpose you show that relationship you come together a few other interesting tidbits. Um, in particular, uh, it was sort of about a buying team, but an interesting sort of view on group dynamics and actually in terms of decision making. So it was explaining that a buying team and sort of likelihood to buy. So if you've got one person uh, involved in sort of the buying team making the decision, the likelihood of making a purchase is around 80%. If that team has two to five people, then the likelihood of making a purchase decision is around 60%. So it falls, but you know, it's there. But once you get to six plus, the likelihood of making a purchase decision drops to around 30%. So kind of something we know and we're aware of, you know, too many people involved can really slow down decision making. But it was interesting in terms of, okay, what's a good size to lead a group? Uh, to sort of, you know, to be uh, that sort of central sort of thinking agent and then to engage with subgroups. So actually, you know, sort of once you get over five, potentially you're slowing things down. So in terms of being change makers, in terms of enabling change and trying to make it happen, it's a consideration to bear in mind. And a little takeaway important for me is really thinking about how you can use all your stakeholders, uh, especially your skeptics. So you want to make change and you've got someone that is always uh, criticizing or always pulling it down or they're, they're a negative Nelly. And you can feel like, oh, I don't want to talk to that person. Oh no, I'm going to get it through everyone else and then I'll go to them. Or like, oh, can we not just go around them? And it's remembering how much value they have. Because if there is one thing that your skeptic is always going to do, they are going to give you honest and direct feedback on your plan. And uh, in particular, later, um, we see, you know, the, the pieces about the importance of engaging everybody of sort of an equal contribution. So use everyone and especially your skeptics. In many ways, they can be your strongest partner in making robust change happen. So that was Kylie Green. On to the next session.